Are you just stun locking this guy? Yeah. Wait, you can just stun lock. Whoa, you can just stun lock Hulks? <laughs> yeah. Holy sh! The Arthrow just takes like, you know, eight or ten shots to kill him, but. Welcome back, Helldivers. With the new balance patch, two stratagems are now top tier against the bots. The first you have seen was the Arc Thrower, and the second is at the back end of the patch notes. It is now my go to loadout against the Automatons. The Automatons also had another change. There was a bug that made them much more challenging than they should be, and they are feeling so much better to go against now. Actually, enjoyable, so we'll cover that too. I do want to mainly stick to the weapons because a lot of people have been asking where I place weapons now and what my loadouts are. So we are going to go through each patch note. I've tested most things pretty thoroughly. Of course, I can miss stuff. So if you have a use case for something and you think I'm not being fair, let me know down below. The way I usually do it is I do like a gut reaction first. I go back and test. I then yell at stream and say, hey, do you like this weapon? Do you not like this weapon? Why? Why not? And then I go back and try it again. And then I'll give you my thoughts like now. Right, starting with the arc thrower, they fix charging inconsistencies and now will always take one second to charge a shot. I had no idea it was intended to function that way. I thought it was actually intentional that the first shot takes a little bit longer and then consecutive shots ac actually go quicker. Uh, apparently that's not the case. It will take one second regardless now. Uh, it, it definitely doesn't break the weapon. Uh, you can notice it if you use the arc throw a lot before the patch, but it doesn't make it unusable. Also, they reduce the distance, which seems like a lot from 50 meters to 35 meters. Don't know if it was super necessary, uh, but it did get an increase in stagger force, and this is actually huge. You can now just stun lock hulks. If you're reversing the automatons and a hulk comes out, you can just lock them down, and the charge time is actually perfect for just keeping them in a perpetual stun lock. Uh, very cool. It suits a pretty small niche, but I still think the arc thrower is in a good position. Infinite ammo. You can take out, um, you can add clear very easily, and now you actually have a pretty big advantage over hulks if you get caught out and you can just lock them down. So I think it's good. Arc thrower is not bad at the moment. Okay, so the guard dog now restores full ammo from supply boxes. Just to clarify, this is uh, supplies that you call in for a, from a stratagem, not the ammo boxes on the ground, and it will restore its ammo. The guard dog is still, in my opinion, complete and utter trash. It just needs to reload so often compared to the guard dog rover, the, like the laser beam version of it, and it's just not worth a backpack slot, in my opinion. It needs to have a good, hard think about itself and what role it suits in this game. Anti-material rifle damage increased by 30%. This is an interesting one because I know there'll be some lovers out there for the AMR and there'll also be a fair bit of criticism about this rifle. The thing is with this weapon, it can do a lot of stuff and it can be very flexible. You can two-shot hulks in the face plates. You can take down the new gunships by shooting their engines, which I actually think is probably the biggest advantage for the AMR right now. You can really target those gunships quite easily. You can shoot through the, uh, I just call them the chicken legs, the, 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 str the striders, right? You can two-shot them easily. You can, of course, like previously, take out tanks and cannons by shooting their, their back plate. But I have two major issues still with the AMR. That being said, I think it is like poised to be a very good weapon, especially if they nerf a couple other weapons. Like this is kind of in second, third place, but could easily become first place if they change a couple of things. My first main issue is there are other weapons that just do a better job, specifically the Quasar laser cannon. This thing is just stupid. You have infinite ammo. It has the damage of an EAT. You can take out hulks incredibly easily. Uh, you can take down tanks incredibly easily. You can take down bile tines. You can drop, uh, you can take out drop ships. And I think that's where the AMR falls down, especially if you're on the bots. Although you can take out the gunships, you can't take out like the drop ships and the Quasar just excels in doing that. So that's issue number one I have with AMR is that 
other support weapons do a better job, specifically the Quasar Laser Cannon. The second major issue I have with it is just the ergonomics. I'm playing on mouse and keyboard. I don't know what it feels like on controller, but just I feel like for sniper rifles, they need a bump in ergonomics. They need to be a little bit more snappy. The game is frantic. When you're playing in a team, people trigger things, and especially on higher levels, it's just really hard to sit in a single location, either crouched or prone. Um, even when you have the armor, the armor like benefits on that improve your ergonomics, like the the armor um, buffs, it, it the game doesn't want you to be standing still scoping in, and it's just hard to set up the AMR with this current ergonomics and be effective with it. I actually really like it. I think it's really fun to use. But it's definitely not best in slot. I think though, if they actually just bumped up the ergonomics and just said, fuck it, it's a video game. Let you swing around and scope it on this thing, move it really quickly. I think it'd be a really, really competitive tool in the sandbox. It obviously can't do everything, but it can do a lot of things. A uh, bump in ergonomics, I think would help those out a lot. Breaker Incendiary. Damage per bullet increased from 15 per bullet to 20 per bullet. Fire damage per tick increased by 50% from all sources. I didn't quite rate this against the automatons, but I did have a good time against the bugs. You can definitely use it how I think it was intended to use it, which is kind of spray fire everywhere and then watch everything burn from the tick damage on the fire. The fire now will just kill you so quick if you've played the game since the patch if a little spark gets on you you're al almost guaranteed to die unless you're really on it most of the time i find i'm like locked into another animation i just die and i'm not ready for the dive um so be careful fire will take you down very very quickly now it is good on the bugs um the fire nades napalm strikes all feel really good However, there does seem to be a question right now in the community whether there is a bug to do with uh, fire damage and essentially that only the host is getting the benefits of the tick damage and that if you join someone else and you're not the host of the session, there is a bug and you are not getting the benefits of it. And maybe, to be honest, maybe this is why it didn't feel good on the automatons for me. I use it on the automatons for a bit, but now I'm thinking maybe I wasn't the host. Maybe that's why I didn't rate it previously with the um, with the breaker. So I, once this gets investigated, I think running a full fire build is like super fun. Fire breaker, fire nades, uh, napalm strikes, uh, fire mines. It is it is like a good time against the bugs a flamethrower chuck that in there too but i just be careful for the moment until we get some confirmation on what's going on with this bug there have been very other weird bugs in this game and it wouldn't surprise me if something is also going on here liberator penetrator now has a full auto mode i use this a bunch i just don't like it this gun feels good to use like it feels nice to shoot but it just doesn't pack the punch you need. I can't seem to find a role for it. I don't like it. I've used it against the bugs and the automatons a bunch, and I just think there are better options out there for your primary. Dominator, increased damage from 200 to 300 and increased stagger. This has replaced the slugger shotgun for me. It is very good against automatons. It's very good against bugs. You do have to manage your ammo with it, and that's probably the main downfall of this weapon, but I don't think it's that hard to manage your ammo with it. You need to have your secondary on and be using that to clean up the small enemies, um, making sure you go to points of interest, you get your ammo back, maybe have some with supply backpack too, or just have a really good support weapon. And this is just an incredibly good gun. It's, I think it's up there... It's first or second with the Scorcher. I place the Scorcher a little bit above it because you can penetrate, well, you don't technically penetrate the the Strider's face shields, but the Scorcher has this weird AOE and you can actually take out like the pilot of the Strider without going through the face plate, which makes it pretty big against the bots. But in general, Dominator is like my probably go-to weapon now. I think it's probably the strongest primary weapon in the game with the exception of the Scorcher, like I just said. Diligence Counter Sniper increased armor penetration from light to medium. 
Man, it's actually fun to use the snipers. I actually have more fun using the snipers when I'm running solo than I do in a team because then you can just manage distance a lot better. I find when you run with randoms or even in a team, it, the game just gets too chaotic too quick and snipers just fall off very quickly. And especially when they have this kind of the ergonomics of them still, like I, I think that snipers from the AMR to the primaries should all just get a buff in ergonomics so you can they become snappy and you keep the uh, like skill with it like having to hit your shots low magazines high damage but just make them a bit more snappier so you can hit stuff a bit easier with it and they feel better it's fun to role play it's definitely not top tier like i i put on the ballistic shield a sidearm and a sniper and went in solo and i actually had a fair bit of fun but if i was playing seriously i wouldn't be using it as well <laughs> either and I think if you want something with the medium armor penetration, you're just going to use the slugger anyway. So, talking about slugger, this was my go-to weapon until these changes. It has reduced stagger, reduced damage from 280 to 250, reduced demolition force, fixed armor penetration tag in the menu. Right. So, before, if you weren't familiar with this weapon, it was top tier. It has fantastic ammo economy because it loads one shell at a time. It is super hard hitting. Uh, it has medium armor penetration on it. You could also break open C containers because of the demo force. Um, but most importantly, it had stagger to it. It had this insane amount of stagger. You could just like lock bots or any or bugs into just like a stagger animation and you can just keep unloading on them. And which is great because it was like a pump action. So you kind of needed that uh, extra time. I think that is what hurts the gun the most right now is losing the stagger. It's you feel it the most against the bots. It's very noticeable when you're being rushed by bots now that you don't have that level of stagger that you previously did. I think it performs actually really well still against the bugs. Uh, I have people come to stream going, oh, I think it's still fine. I'm like, I bet you you're fighting against the bugs. Like, it's actually still quite high performing against the bugs. Against the bots, I don't preference it anymore. I prefer the Dominator over the Slugger. I'm just replacing those basically. Recoilless Rival, increased number of rockers you restore from supply boxes from 2 to 3. Spear, increased number of missiles you restore from supply boxes from 1 to 2. I don't know what role the Recoilless Rifle has in the game right now with the Quasar. If you have two people with the Quasar, Laser Cannon and Infinite Ammo, um, it comes back in like 10 seconds between uh, like cooldowns. I feel like you probably put out more damage than you would have with someone with the recoilless rifle and carrying your backpack. And with the Quasar, you don't, you have a free backpack slot still as well. It's great to see, but I don't see it taking the, the spot of um, the Quasar. And the spear, everybody shits on the spear and it is for good reason. The lock-on is an absolute mess. However, it does have a really niche role and I hope they can fix the lock on because it is really good against the bots at long range. You can take out fabricators, you can take out like the, the cannon, the, the turrets, uh, all from distance. And I think that's the, the role it needs to suit. And that lock, if that lock on was more consistent, it might be worth running one of them in your team on bots to take out some of that stuff from range. I, they just need to make that lock on consistent. I'm fine for it to not be crash hot at close distances, but consistent lock on at longer distances should be there and still quite not at the moment. That being said, the Quasar laser cannon can shoot stuff at distances. It can blow up fabricators. It can blow out the turrets too. So it does get outperformed again by Quasar. Heavy machine gun, the highest fire rate mode reduced from 1200 to more moderate 950. Now, I was balls deep in Dragon's Dogma when this uh, heavy machine gun came out, so I've only recently started playing with it. Um, is it just me or is it dog shit? I don't know. I can't seem to find a role for this weapon. I hear that it's a bit better against the bots. Um, for machine guns, I've used, I prefer to use machine guns to clear smaller enemies and then you know, your other weapons to clear heavy enemies. This doesn't seem to be good at either. It doesn't seem to be good at clearing heavy enemies because it can't. It doesn't have much armor penetration uh, and it's got a small magazine and it takes ages to reload. 
Some other important changes are the Bile Titan can no longer be stunned. The stun nades were huge against the Bile Titans. Uh, no, no more. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I think we've got enough tools to deal with the Bile Titans, so I'm probably okay with it. Definitely was fun for a little bit to stun Bile Titans. Also made testing really easy. Oh well. Enemies now properly target exosuits. Previously, many enemies effectively ignored exosuits if a Helldiver on foot was available. A fixed exosuit being able to fire their weapons while opening the minimap. Firstly, huge that you can actually use your minimap now in the, the mechs. That's great. Targeting the exosuits. I don't know how I feel about this. So if you didn't use the exosuits much, yeah, they would enemies would completely ignore the suit. So you could call it in and they would target you and not the mech. And you could just run around for a little bit and then get in it when it was safe. Now it seems like they're going to target the suit and destroy it. So you are going to have to plan a little bit more ahead to call it in and sort of roll into battle with it rather than uh, calling it in when shit's going south. Now these last two changes are huge. The Helldiver and the Exosuit both had a bug that made them sometimes take explosive damage multiple times, making things like automaton rockets too deadly. This is now fixed. This is incredibly noticeable. You will now survive rockets, which is so nice. This has made a huge difference to playing on the bot maps. If you haven't played the bots uh, recently, go play them. You'll find there'll be a massive difference now and you can actually feel like you can survive without getting rocketed every second. And the last one, the thing that is now in my loadout all the time, a ballistic shield changes. Collision mesh has been slightly increased in size for more forgiveness. Change shield poses so that less of the Helldiver is exposed. Addressed a bug where parts of the Helldiver would become vulnerable while using the shield in first person. Ballistic shield is now S tier. It is straight up my go-to loadout against automatons. You can uh, you can you can block you can block machine gun fire from tanks. Uh, you can even block uh, the gun, the, the like cannons. It will destroy your shield, but you won't take any damage. You pretty much can stand in front of anyone shooting like small arms and just not take any damage. You can reload behind cover. You can throw grenades by cover, behind cover. You can't heal when you do the heal animation. It does expose you. But as long as you take out anyone who's shooting rockets, you can just tank everything else. It is incredibly powerful and really fun to use switch to your sidearm or have an smg on in your primary and just run around with the ballistic shield really really fun really really good top tier for automatons the patch notes didn't mention but you also don't drop your shield now when you get shot by rockets holding your shield so you, before you actually would like drop it and have to go pick it up absolute pain now when you get knocked back from rockets uh you don't drop it I think it just like resets to on your back and you have to change your weapons again to bring it back out. Very good change. There you have it, my thoughts on the balance patch. If you have other thoughts or disagree or agree or want to add something to it, please let me know down below. That's how I've been able to make better videos because I do read the comments and uh, I get really useful information from you guys because there's hundreds of you out there, if not thousands of you, playing the game and experimenting. So if you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you can leave the words ballistic shield because i think that is huge as usual it's been a pleasure this is my games peace